Rusty Quill Presents Chapter and Multiverse Delightful to see you again, my friend. We have a new drink on the menu, and I think you're going to enjoy it immensely. I call it the Interdimensional Portal. It'll take you to another world. Quite the tagline, eh? But before I forget, I must tell you about a wedding I attended recently. As most of the wedding party and the guests were pirates, I was expecting things to be lively, but thanks to a strange trio and their herd of goats, Events took a decidedly surreal turn. Hello and welcome to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle, and my pronouns are she, her, and today we will be playing Corporate Overgoats, which was designed by Morgan J for the RPG Writer Workshop, and sees our players running their very own live goat experience. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players. Let's start with Helen. Hello, everyone. I am Helen. My pronouns are she, he and they. And I'm very excited to be a ridiculous goat. Fabulous. And Pip. Hi there. I'm Pip Gladwin. My pronouns are he, him. And I am also excited to be ridiculous goat. And Ben. I'm Ben Meredith. Pronouns are he, him. No excitement for being a goat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you won't you won't be goats per se. You will be you will be herding the goats. You will be corralling ah. the goats. Oh, I'm so, I'm out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, no. End the episode there. All done. So uh, let me just tell you a little bit about how this game works. You are playing a group of business partners who own a herd of lovable goats. And as the game says, you aim to conquer capitalism with their beautiful chaotic faces. (laughs) Uh, The rules also say you've bought into a live goat experience franchise, but the rules of the franchise are strict and set you up for failure. So be careful because losing one event fee is enough to doom you. Instead of your game master, I am, in fact, your CEO, your corporate evil overlord. (laughs) And I will be trying my best to make your franchise fail because your franchise fee is non-refundable and makes room for a new franchisee to buy in. Your goal as players is to complete the event without emptying or filling the chaos meter, um, which has seven stages, zero to six, with tame at one end and chaotic at the other end. The game doesn't end until the event is finished, so failure is no escape. If you (laughs) fail, then you just have to keep going until it's done. Uh, As part of this game, uh, before we met up today, we decided on a genre after suggesting a few options. I believe we settled on pirates. We did indeed. Yeah. So... That's a that's a clash of genres for you, um, and I am excited. The company that you franchised with is a leader in the goat entertainment business. Uh, I would like you to tell me what their brand is. What is this company that you have shackled yourself to for financial gain? Given the uh, theme of pirates, is our company a ship? It very well could be. I do like that. It would be, yeah. Oh my gosh, maybe we're one of those like we're like we're like a touring ship, and we take our goats to different places. Yeah, <laughs> like a mobile library, but goats but on goats. the sea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the mobile the mobile library of goats. Is that <laughs> the goat boat? <laughs> the goat yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you've Hell nailed yes. you've, you've nailed it there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So each of you will be playing a character. What is your character's name? What do they look like? Let's start with that, and then we can go into how you know each other, second of all. So, Helen, what is your character's name? My character's name will be Madame Fluffy, <clears throat> and I am a goat enthusiast, used to own a farm. It was mixed alpacas and goats, but the alpacas ran away. The goats took over the farm. <laughs> Amazing. What is Madame Fluffy's pronouns and appearance? Madame Fluffy is uh, she, her. And she is, she's in her 50s. She has uh, a greying afro and big horn rimmed glasses. And 
Dresses like the kind of person who would run a hybrid alpaca goat farm. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And Pip, who, who is your character? My character is a man named Edwin Poole. It goes by he, him. He wears a lot of tweed. Nice. Just just a lot of a lot of tweed. And under the name I've just written, believes the goats are too good for this world. I don't know why I've written that, but I have. And it's a choice <laughs> that I've made about this character in the I moment. I enjoy that very much. Um, so I think he, he is obviously also a goat enthusiast, but sort of maybe in a different way. Like, you know, he's part of this business because he loves goats, but, you know, they, they could be doing so much more. And they're so <laughs> talented and beautiful, and this world does not deserve them. Oh, are you the kind of person who's going to be reduced to tears by a really good goat? Probably. Every Aww. day, daily, I think. <laughs> <laughs> just from the phrasing, I was, are you just going to be a serial goat murderer? They're too good for this world, <laughs> I, so I shall send them to another. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah I mean, it might go that it, I mean, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, see how the event goes. Any other distinguishing features apart from lots of tweed, or is that the main, the main thing? It really is hard to discern anything else about the man due to the volume of tweed that he is wearing. That's like me when I was going through my Matt Smith Doctor Who phase, uh, and so, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Uh, and Ben, who is your character? Uh, my character is Aloysius Gout, uh, pronouns he, him. Um, just a massive man in all respects. Big hair, big beard, big tum, big arms, big legs, big strong man, about six foot four. Very vital, uh, I'd say late 50s. Uh, dresses like a like a costume pirate. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. So, proper Captain Hook sort of energy. And Captain Hook hair, but a, a bigger beard than Captain Hook. Um, yeah. And uh, he's in it for the money, baby. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, how did you all meet each other? Was it the goats that brought you together, or did you know each other before then, and then the goat idea sprung upon you? I really like the idea that we met at a goat convention of some kind. Or like, oh, or one of those... I can't remember what they're called, but when all of the farmers get together and show off all their animals and like bid on them and auction them and it's like Is that just a farm show? A farm show, basically, yeah, a farm show. What do you th- what do you think? Yeah. Uh, I I think you, you certainly could have met you certainly could have met Edwin there, although he probably would have been there like trying to liberate a lot of these goats from <laughs> from you know, the sort of menial labour and, and you know that, that 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 kind of thing. He probably would have been shouting at a lot of people that they were treating their goats really badly, and like, ah, here's a man who cares about goats. <laughs> Did we all get thrown out of the fr- of the farm show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I probably turned up thinking like mistaking it for some sort of um, MLM sort of convention. <laughs> um, so I was looking for the because I'm more of a financial pirate than a, a, mm. a piratical one. <laughs> so yeah, I, I probably turned up looking looking for the next big. You know, it's not a scam. It's just a, a you know, there's just a high return on investment, right? You know, yes, it sounds too good to be true, but that's because it just is. Good, not, no, it is true. It's it's just good and true. That's, yeah. you know. Fabulous. Uh, and I would like to know what the relationships are like between your characters. So who of the other two is uh, is more in your favour and who is less in your favour? So who does Madame Fluffy prefer out of Aloysius and... Edwin, just to just to spice things up. I want her to have a crush on one of them, and I don't know. Uh, would that be okay? Yeah, that's, uh, right. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like for Madame Fluffy's aesthetic, it's going to be Aloysius Gout that she has a crush on. Checks out. I do not blame <laughs> you. A pirate and a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> so all I've written for Edwin is lots of tweed. I don't know what... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving you a lot else, to be fair, Helen. Um, <laughs> then that'll be it. But Madame Fluffy like likes a strong personality, and as far as she's concerned, Edwin is just a walking tweed mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, and uh, Pip, what is Edwin's feelings about the other members of this group? So I think just to just to continue the the sort of the circle, I, I don't I don't think Edwin has a romantic bone in his body. Um, and any bones he does have are made of tweed. Um, uh, yeah, (laughs) he's uh, just flapping around. Um, um, yeah, this is horrifying tweed man. I think he probably 
Madam Fluffy as a as a businesswoman and someone you know bringing goats to the people and you know and she's a goat enthusiast she loves goats that's that's how they will have met and how they will have kind of got to know each other and so by the same token I think there's probably a level of of disdain for Aloysius because he's only in it for the money he doesn't understand the goats he doesn't even like goats and uh, I don't think Edwin Edwin you know in his heart of hearts understands why you need somebody like that in a business but kind of I don't think he's able to sort of align that with his own personality and kind of be like and just be okay with this person because you know if you don't like goats what are you doing here basically (laughs) understandable and for Aloysius who do you prefer out of these two we have to keep the circle going so I think Aloysius like just really quite likes Edwin for no other reason uh, than um, Edwin just really loves the thing that he loves and that is very endearing and and he's right Aloysius doesn't really give a damn about goats specifically but you just like seeing somebody being so into the thing they're into it's just very joyous and he considers Madame Fluffy a sort of failed businesswoman so he's worried <gasps> that because well, you know she had a goat farm she doesn't anymore <laughs> so he's a bit worried that that she's sort of an albatross on the project but we'll see how it pans out <laughs> incredible I love uh, this wonderful and uh, I think we have got your feelings and your uh, reasons for buying in but just to just to lay it out in black and white what were the reasons that you decided to go into business together and buy into this franchise I need to buy back my farm from the goats. <laughs> wait, wait, f- wait, from the from goats? the goats. <laughs> the goats bought your farm. They bought you out of your own farm. We've got we've got a man made of tweed. <laughs> we can have business goats. So what you're saying is, <laughs> your goats created like a, collo- a collective. <laughs> Yes! Bought you out. <laughs> Unionized. I, I, you're now the landlord trying to get back in. 100, yes. 100% was just quietly whispering to the goats about unionizing that whole time. <laughs> just, you know, you don't have to live like this. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. And so, yeah, and presumably, presumably for Edwin, it is about spending as much time with goats as possible. And for uh, Aloysius, it's about making as much money as possible. Am I, am I correct in that assumption? The booty, yes. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think there's, there's, there's possibly even a, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, this is coming to me as we're going, but there's, there's maybe even a kind of attitude of, if an opportunity to free these goats presents itself, <laughs> in a way that would be good for them, obviously I'm just going to throw them in the sea, uh, then, you know, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's a, maybe that's a thing, I'm not sure, although I, I realise the, the, the object of the game is to have a successful event, so I'm, I'm not going to intentionally screw that up. Although we don't stop the game if we fail. That's yeah, very true. if you fail, right. it might be like, well, now we, there's nothing to lose. Bye, bye, goats. Be free. For sure. I, d- I just I don't want I don't want to enter into a, a, a collaborative storytelling experience with the express intention of sabotaging it. So uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that. And that's yeah. <laughs> All right. But uh, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. That's good to know. And you get to choose five traits for your herd of goats from the list on the rules. It is recommended that you choose a mix of more chaotic and more tame traits because in order to keep the game balanced, you will be having to try and make them do chaotic or tame things to stay around the middle of the chaos meter. So if you choose a lot of chaotic ones or a lot of tame ones, it would give me room to exploit the weaknesses and make things go wildly wrong. Yeah, I recommend a mix of different traits. I am a fan of Scream. I like Scream. <laughs> I think my choice has to be Carry Away Sins. <laughs> yes. Oh, they do. <laughs> I'm going to go with the first one on the list. I'm going to go with Small. Yeah. I think these are little delicate goats. <laughs> that scream. That scream and carry away your sins. <laughs> <laughs> like little angels. <laughs> a multiplicity of traits. Be not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what else is chaotic? I mean, tongue. Tongue is. <laughs> tongue is oh, it's got to be. It's got to be. There's so many. I'm just, it's just so non, I mean, it's very specific, but it's like one of the practical applications of just the word tongue. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. I'd like to suggest many as the last one. Sure. Oh. We have many goats. Yeah. As opposed to a, a, <laughs> a small number of them. Many small screaming licking absoluting <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm 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 i think many is is great i do just want to shout out for familiar <laughs> yep just 
Yeah. In what, familiar, in what like, co- these goats are over f- like in what context are they familiar yeah is it like i've seen that goat somewhere before <laughs> or is it like whoa you're friendly i'm not sure how i feel about that <laughs> or or they're friends with witches mm. yeah yeah that is true but I, I think i think many is i think many is good i i, I like the idea of us having a lot of these little go- well they're smaller right so we can get more on the boat yeah, yep. true. It's the it's the kind of horse sized duck or duck sized horses thing. Mm-hmm. Lots of small ones. So you're so you're saying these goats are the sizes of ducks? Cool. Yep, confirmed. <laughs> I'm happy goats. for that to be the case if you want, but <laughs> got a, got I a mean, hundred duck sized goats. <laughs> they are small. <laughs> so the way that you'll be rolling in this game is that your goats, as the rules say, are the only power you have. You roll 2d6 to persuade them to do tame or chaotic things so that your guests will leave with their expectations fulfilled. Uh, And you have some control of the narrative while the chaos meter is in the middle of the range. But be aware that the closer it gets to either end, it will be harder to bring it back to the centre and you'll want to focus on controlling your goats. So the chaos meter, as I said, goes from stage zero to stage six. Stage zero is the most tame your goats can be, and stage six is the most chaotic your goats can be. You start the game at stage three, right in the middle. Uh, The standard success threshold for rolls is seven, uh, but the closer to the ends of the meter, the harder it is for players to move the meter back to the center. So you add plus one to the success threshold for each step closer to the end. So for example... If you're at stage zero, you need to pass a 10 to make your goats more chaotic. Stage one, nine, stage two, eight. Stage three is the placeholder. And then you need an eight, nine, 10 at stage four, five, and six to make your goats more tame. And when I was preparing for this game, I uh, rolled for which event you would be running as first time franchisees. And I got number three, wedding goats. (gasps) Oh, God. That's amazing. So Wedding wedding on a boat, on the goat boat. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) You will be providing your goats to the wedding of Captain Arabella Scarhart and Captain Christabel Grenadier, who are having a beautiful island wedding uh, on uh, Pirate Island. They have chosen to dock in the harbour of Chapter, uh, where all kinds of rapscallions and scallywags go to escape the law. Uh, And you have an itinerary for the day that you have to follow and make sure the goats participate in every stage, uh, including a ceremony at the church. You need to make sure the goats are the ring bearers. There will be pictures by a sketch artist outside of the church, which the goats must not disrupt. There is a drinks reception on the beach, a lavish meal at the local tavern, and finally a raucous party in the town square where the goats may let their hair down, question mark. Their tongues down. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, just a practical question and I'm, I'm pretty sure the answer is it doesn't matter but like <laughs> what period is this <laughs> are we in the golden age of piracy or <laughs> i think this is a weird amalgam of golden age of piracy and modern corporates great because yeah, yeah business yeah, yeah, yeah. i think it's it's whatever you want amazing good that's what i hoped you were gonna say good uh let me set the scene you are standing outside of a of a quaint little church on a beautiful tropical island, surrounded by palm trees. There are wedding guests everywhere. the The two brides are excitedly discussing with each other the um, their future together, uh, and you are there with your herd of goats. What is your plan to make sure that these goats do what they what do what they're supposed to do? So they're meant to be ring bearers, right? Yes, their first job is to be ring bearers. Then I guess our job is to attach the rings to them in some way. That's the first stage. And then the second stage is get them to go in a straight line. And the third stage is to get them to scream the wedding march. um, (laughs) I mean, are we we incorporating everything into this? So, like, uh, you know, are they presenting the ring on the tongue? Like, is that... Mm. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Roll that. Yeah. When, you, yeah, when you use a trait, when you use one of your herd traits, you get to add a plus one to your roll. So so then another challenge is to make them not swallow the rings. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the challenge, because they will have to carry them in their mouths. <laughs> so Henry Vince, the cook who, uh, who is the cook on the ship of Captain Arabella Scarhart and Captain Christabel Grenadier, comes up to you and... Uh, he has been tasked with making everything perfect for the day. 
And despite it being a very formal occasion, he's wearing uh, he's wearing a very lovely suit with a cravat, but also an apron on top of it to make sure that it's kept nice while he does all the all the business of the day. And he's like, right, well, uh, are the goats ready to go? The goats are always ready. <laughs> Great, that's good. Yes, absolutely. We uh, we just need to, um, you know, just put the put the put the, put the rings in the on the on the tongues, and um, then they're they're good to walk up the aisle. Yes, yes. Fantastic. All right. Um, I, I'll let you get on with it. You, you're the experts. Uh, I believe that the brides are about to walk up the aisle, so um, the goats will be following behind, uh, if that's all right. Perfect. Yes, absolutely. We can do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like you to make a roll. I think this would be a tame roll because you want them to be orderly and to do what you want. Mm-hmm. So uh, who wants to make the roll for them to be tame, which would be a success of seven. I think Edwin will pick up the the alpha goat who's going to be leading this uh, procession, leading the rest of them. Let's call him Darren. <laughs> Just pick up this tiny, dark-sized goat. Um, I've said it now, it's in the game. <laughs> and hold its weird rectangular eyes close to, close to his and just, you've got this, Darren. You can do it. I believe in you. This is nothing. This is nothing to you. You're perfect. And I pop the ring in the, the ring in his mouth. I pop the rings, rather, I guess, in his mouth, and pop him down and, and set him loose. Brilliant. You can add a plus one for tongue then, because <laughs> that's where the rings are, I guess. Yeah, right. Plus one for tongue. Oh, that is a s- eight. Eight. Incredible. A success right <gasps> off the bat. The goats are now more tame, so you are at stage two. The goats make their way beautifully and reverently down the aisle, (laughs) following the brides, one of whom, Arabella Scarhart, is resplendent in a perfectly tailored pair of trousers, a billowing shirt, an exquisite corset, and a truly enormous hat. The the (gasps) rumour is that she stole it from an admiral, and it's her pride and joy. Excellent. Uh, And Captain Christabel Grenadier, arm in arm, despite it being a day of celebration, is still festooned with guns and explosives fully armed at all times uh, and has shined up her leather armor for the occasion and as they go down the aisle we shall pause for a short break and welcome back so the goats have made their way down the aisle following the brides on their way to the altar now the vicar uh, spreads his arms and welcomes everyone to the church and makes sure everyone is sitting comfortably before he begins the sermon and uh, takes the vows. It is a very beautiful occasion. Arabella has written her own vows, and they are very, they are very romantic and kind of Byron-esque. Whereas Christabel is a bit more abrupt and curt in her vows, and is a bit more like, "Yes, we're getting married. You know why?" kind of thing. <laughs> like, like a Captain Holt. We, we, we've, we've discussed this already. We don't need to. We don't need to. <laughs> bandy about all these fancy words in front of these people. Of course, for Arabella, that is the most romantic thing that Christabel could have done. They embrace, they kiss. It is beautiful. The ceremony is completed. Now, the goats are in the, still in the church, uh, and they are seeing that there are lots of lovely flowers around that might be delicious for them to eat. Is there anything you want to do to stop them from destroying the, the decorations on their way out? Have they delivered the rings? Already? They have, yes. They have they have done their duty. I don't think we need to, because of course we provide a free cleanup service as well. So as you leave the church, all of the flowers are eaten, which means that you don't have to clean them up anymore. It's 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 a good service, and if we upgrade you to the platinum plan, we can provide more things like this for a <laughs> monthly subscription. Eight pieces of eight, so a piece of wait. 48, I think. <laughs> That's, no. Anyway, whatever. But for, for, for a very acceptable fee, we can keep this monthly subscription going. If you ever need the goats, we'll sail over, release them onto your island. They'll strip it bare. And, you know, that's, uh, assumedly, that's what you want. Great. All right. I would like you, Aloysius, to make a chaos roll for these goats to see if they eat just the flowers and not anything else like someone's wedding clothes. Sure. Um, I'd also like to uh, claim carrying away uh, your sins because they are carrying away the sins of littering. <laughs> yes, I will accept that with with gratitude. Okay. Uh, I rolled a ten. 
Hey, Incredible. Amazing. These goats are absolutely rocking it. They hoover up the flowers like there's no tomorrow, chewing away. Um, the, several of the guests kind of coo and awe at these adorable tiny goats who are just swarming <laughs> over the plinths that the flowers are kept on. It's, yeah, it's, it's strange that they're not more alarmed, but... Mm. Apparently, it is adorable. Just so extending it... out their tongues, scooping up a bouquet into their mouth. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Move on. And then, yep. and then, of course, screaming with delight. <laughs> <In> triumph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I, no, I like the idea. These have the scream of a human. <laughs> they just open their mouth, and you just hear. Ah! <laughs> I mean, there are some very human-like screams that come yeah, from the mouths of goats. Uh, yeah. that is, I love it. That is a fact. I did hear a dog cough like a man once. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing you hear in the corner of a pirate tavern. I heard a dog cough like yeah, there a was, man. There was a, there was a woman walking her little dog past me. This was years ago. And there was no one else in the street. And she walked past me and I just heard... <laughs> <laughs> it was the dog. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Did the dog want you my, to get out of the way, or had you mildly annoyed the dog? My, my childhood trauma notwithstanding. Um. <laughs> All right, so the guests uh, start to congregate together. Uh, because the goats have garnered quite a bit of attention and are quite the talk of the party, a terrifying pirate who is incongruously dressed entirely in pastels and has a billowing purple beard approaches the three of you and says all right uh i i just came to congratulate you on uh, on the excellent goats uh, and this is in fact purple beard the infamous pirate <laughs> uh well thank you um uh though all goats are perfect yes thank thank you thank you very much um purple beard it is an honor to have um ha- ha- for you to for yes Fantastic. Um, I would, uh, I would like to inquire about uh, how how one hires your services. I um, I have a TikTok video that I would like to film, <laughs> and perhaps these goats would be a good uh, a good addition. Which, as we all know, is when you stand under the the, the market clock <laughs> as it goes TikTok, and you yes <laughs> put on a little show. Yes, someone yeah, someone takes successive sketches and puts yes. them in a line and it shows a moving picture. <laughs> so you want to make a flip book under a clock? Yes, with goats. Oh, over to you, Aloysius. You normally deal with this kind of thing. Yes, well, I think it's a fabulous idea and it'll definitely take off. Now, are you looking to uh, uh, be hiring the whole herd uh, like, like these two lovely ladies did? Or are you um, looking to hire a portion of it? Of course, it depends how big your sketchbook is, because I know they're quite small, but even a hundred duck-sized goats take up quite a lot of room. Just pouring out of the door of the church. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a a viscous fluid almost of goats. (laughs) (laughs) So how are they on the walls? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, I think the more goats, the better, surely. Oh, excellent. Well, um... Can I interest you in our premium herd expansion program, whereby if you find us any more goats, we can add it to the total collective and we'll provide you a discount on each goat you provide. So as you expand the herd, thus providing more goats for your lovely little sketchbook, uh, we can we can knock some stuff off of the price, of course. Ah, I see. Right. I will have to um, speak with my financial advisors and my bosun and my quartermaster and make sure that it's all by the book. Uh, but I will definitely keep that offer in mind. Thank you very much for uh, telling me about your fantastic business. Oh, you're very welcome. I must say, um, these, these lovely lady pirates are, of course, fantastic and I'm very happy for them. But uh, I do rather want to upstage them somewhat. I do think that they're hogging the limelight at the moment, and that can't do. Not when, not when you're as infamous as me. Well, what do you have in, what do you have in mind? Is, is, is your, is your TikTok going to involve another wedding? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just uh, throwing out ideas if you were to, um, if you were to mm, make this event go somewhat skew if that would reflect better on me and my future much better goat-themed event. You mean sabotage? 
Oh, that's a very dirty word. Oh, I don't want to bandy that about here. No, nonsense. And then he does a massive wink. (laughs) So how are you going to make it worth our while then? Well, I could offer a significant donation to the upkeep of the herd. I mean, you could just pay us. It's fine. Yeah, I could pay you. We're all pirates here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could pay. I, I could give you money. That's that. Yeah, that's no problem. I can Nothing. give you some money. That's exactly what we're after. Thank you. Anyway, I shall leave you to the to the rest of the event. Thank you very much for your time. He takes off his hat, doffs it, and turns around to rejoin the festivities. And there is, in fact, a sketch artist setting up an easel in front of the church where uh, the brides and their retinue are gathering for. Um, their portrait is to be taken. Gosh, that's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. Better start uh, uh, gathering the goats now. I think. Yeah, a lot of them have their eye on the on the stack of paper that the the artist has brought, and even some of the paints and the and the charcoals and the pastels and yeah, they're they're really eyeing up those loose artistic implements. Bless them! They've just eaten an entire church's worth of flowers and yet they are still hungry that insatiable insatiable hunger Ah. they're getting more eldritch by the minute (laughs) i mean goats are pretty damn eldritch to begin with it was only ever a matter of when not if (laughs) and uh, there is also a young cabin boy uh who is eyeing up the goats and kind of reaching out to possibly pet one of them, but this particular goat is looking rather suspicious and possibly aggressive. <gasps> so I would like for someone to uh, pitch me a roll to stop this goat from from biting this young lad. Madame Fluffy is not going to make this roll because she thinks if you want to pet an aggressive goat, then you get what's coming to you. Fair. I was uh, holding myself back from reacting immediately there because. Helen hadn't, hadn't done a roll yet, so uh, there is no, there is no sort of. It's all goats. It's all goats. So I can't launch myself physically at this young man. Um, uh, he's trying to touch one of the goats. I'll kill him. Um, <laughs> I think there's a scream. I think perhaps if this goat is looking untrustworthy of this of this of this young man, then I think we we think maybe maybe pushing pushing towards the more chaotic with a. With like a, a goat scream to discourage him from uh, from touching them. Yes, um, I believe we're now back at seven again because we went tame and then we went chaotic. So we're going chaotic this time towards. So we're stage three. Mo- possibly, if we succeed, moving towards stage four. G- yeah, give me a give me a scram with a with a threshold of seven. Oh damn! Uh, that is six, seven, eight, nine. That's a ten. Incredible! All right. Wow. Yes, this tiny, tiny goat lets out the most horrific humanoid scream imaginable. It sounds like those Wilhelm screams that always appear in films. (laughs) It's laser focused on this small boy. (laughs) Luckily, no one else really notices because they're bustling about having a wonderful time. It is just directed directly at this young boy, Timmy Peters, the cabin boy. And he pulls his hand back and scurries away without having uh, injured himself on the on the fearsome teeth of the goat. <laughs> the sketch artist continues to draw these fantastic uh, party guests, and one of the goats, actually a, a few of the goats, are, are taking an interest in Christabel's fine collection of grenades and explosives. <gasps> one of them is also very near a candle. <laughs> oh no! And you can just see, you can see in your mind's eye the series of events that could come to pass where the goat sets itself alight on the candle, walks past, tries to get at one of the grenades and sets off. As a very brief aside, Aloysius isn't going to um, act, but we'll think, what if that's claimable on the insurance? <laughs> <laughs> a very good thought, a very good thought. Uh, Madam Fluffy is absolutely going to intervene. She's going to take the most simple approach and... I want to put the candle out, but I can only use a goat to do that, right? I think so, yes. Uh, Just place it mouth first over the candle and it'll just consume it. (laughs) Tongue! Tongue. Yeah, Yeah, lick lick the candle out. (laughs) (laughs) I would would suggest that that is a tame roll. 
it's very hard to tell these days. I mean, it's control. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a controlled action. It's like mm-hmm. you yes, know. and it is to prevent chaos. Yes, and and if it goes wrong, then you know, you know, you've you've knocked a candle into some explosives. <laughs> What are we at currently? We're at a stage four. Uh, so it's a threshold of eight to make the goat more tame, but with a plus one for tongue. Let's see how we go. Oh my gosh, that is 12. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're, We're nailing a, this. Not nary a failure for these <laughs> incredible goats. Very hard to keep the tension up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you draw that game where everyone, everything went really smoothly and they all had a lovely time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, yes. Please please describe to me how this goat manages to avert this disaster, Helen. I'm just going to say that um, the goat likes spicy food and therefore takes a big bite out of the can. <laughs> Flame first. Incredible. That's a lovely yep. time. It's piquant. <laughs> as you witness this Aloysius you make a mental note fire swallowing goats might be a good business venture for future reference I get ourselves hired out to circuses <laughs> as the sketching is taking rather a while this this was a, a, a kind of poorly planned day where there'd be a lot of waiting around for a full portrait to be done like the preliminary sketches at least but still preliminary sketches take a while the goats who have now been uh, deterred from the explosives are starting to, as we have established, they can climb walls, so they can climb a person. One of them is inching its way up uh, Arabella, trying to make for her magnificent hat. Right, <gasps> row. I think I would like Madame Fluffy to intervene again because um, she also has an affinity for massive hats. <laughs> and would hate to see one because uh, her she had many a casualty while on her farm <laughs> with her uncont- her, her hats were seized as communal <laughs> goat property <laughs> <laughs> and she wants to prevent this fate happening to someone else all right we've got scream carry away sins small tongue many i wonder if i can use many to simply hinder the goat from from reaching the hat like other goats get in the way yeah Go- goats are interested in something in a different direction and block them and there's a small goat stampede situation yes that works for me it is a roll of seven i think to make things more tame because you don't want the goat to eat the hat or would you would you argue it for the I other way? I can see it going either way because a small stampede of goats is quite chaotic. Yeah. Let's say it's uh you're going towards stage two to make your goats more chaotic. That is eleven. Whoa. Oh my goodness. This is bizarre. Maybe my look with dice has finally turned. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens in a campaign, eh? Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> they're just treating me nicely for the special. Yeah. Okay, so yes, this absolutely this small stampede of goats surrounds the errant goat and manages to hustle it back down to the ground where uh, they start adorably grooming each other Aww. and uh, making quite the display that will no doubt end up in the finished sketch. <laughs> Excellent. I believe we have spent quite enough time on the on the sketching. As the sketch uh, is finished, and the artist uh, proudly rolls up their work and makes sure it's safe in a suitcase, the brides come over to you, and Arabella says, "Oh, thank you so much for a marvelous, marvelous, uh, intriguing uh, in addition to our wedding. It has been quite." quite unchaotic so far. I'm very impressed you managed to corral these rather bizarre creatures. Well, um, you know, um, it comes with experience of, um, uh, uh, cr- cr- I, I, I was a farmer, you see, and so I was very literally, uh, corralling goats for a while. And some alpacas, but, um, they, 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 they hopped away. Um, I didn't make the fences high enough. Anyway, um, yes, Good, thank you. You're you're very welcome. Uh, I, I I want to ask, what is what is your secret? How do you how do you keep these goats so uh, healthy and happy and 
entertaining. Oh, now that's proprietary, but if you do want to attend our series of seminars on the matter, <laughs> uh, ticket prices are quite affordable. I see. Well, that is quite interesting. And Christabel kind of pipes up and is like, yup, yep, yeah, it's good to it's good to make your money when you can. I understand you, mate. I get you. Good ladies, truly, there is no secret. There is only the whim of the goat. It is pure luck that they have behaved the way they have today. Should they decide to devour the entire church, devour all of us, they shall, in the end. Is one potential perspective of the kind of person who hasn't been to my seminar, which is all the secrets of making sure goats do exactly what you want to do, steps 1 to 75. Ah, right, cool. Okay, well, see you later. And Christabel just walks off. With no further ceremony, and Arabella's like, I'm terribly sorry. She's always like this, but it's one of the reasons I do love her so, and she follows after her. And so, it is now time to head down to the beach for a drinks reception. There are various people with trays of drinks and canapes walking around um, on this beautiful sandy beach with the rolling blue waters in front of you. And it is at this point that you notice a Bang Bang McSplosion, who is Christabel's <gasps> best friend and partner in blowing stuff up. Bang Bang McSplosion is even more possibly festooned with weapons and explosives than Christabel is. It is quite impressive. It's almost, you can't even see any clothes because there's just so many sticks of dynamite and grenades and <laughs> weapons on this person. And they are downing several glasses of champagne uh, as, the, as the festivities continue. And the wild movements of Bang Bang Explosion, as they dance to a tune that only they can hear, seems to spook the goats somewhat. And they look poised to kick at the weapons and it is at this point on that terrible cliffhanger will the goat <laughs> kick the explosives that we shall end the episode for today thank you so much for listening to chapter of multiverse and may i ask each of you where can we find you on the internet and if you have anything to plug starting with helen you can find me on twitter at electo 101 that is a l e c t o 101 where I just mainly just post about the stuff I'm doing. Fabulous. And Pip. You can find me at Pip underscore Gladwin on Twitter. I'm definitely in like the rest of Chapter of Multiverse. You can find me on the Masks campaign. I'll be right there. You can listen back to the very sadly now finished by the time this comes out uh, series with Nova Coats. Been doing that for a while. Uh, yeah, just generally things, podcasts, sounds, voice, done now. Cool. <laughs> and Ben, how about you? Uh, yeah, I stream with my brother every Sunday at 4pm on twitch.tv forward slash the brothers Meredith. Fantastic. You can find me on Twitter at Maddie underscore abstract where there are links to all the things that I do and we hope to see you next time on Chapter and Multiverse. But until then, from all of us here in the space between worlds, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by Natasha Johnston with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronfrey. This episode was edited by Maddie Searle, Tessa Vroom and Kathy Rinella with music by Nicova Teze. Thank you for listening. <laughs>